I've just gone over a couple of things which I'm expected of you each each session. Okay, so first of all, though, oh, hang on, I haven't clicked on the screen. There we go. Um, I have already uploaded some sessions that I have pre for this previously done, which will help you um, on your GCSE journey. So there's one on uh, exam application. Highly recommend watching that. There is one on practical skills. Um, and there are some others as well. I think there's like there's a few on there. Um, these will help you throughout the course. I will be um, different points of the course um, going over um, practical skills, maths and science as well, just to boost those up. And if we do come across a session where the content doesn't quite fit an hour, then I might sort of tag on a little bit about um practical skills or something else an additional skill to just the content that you need to know okay so over the next 12 months you will be given not only course content but you will also be given the skills that you can apply to achieve the best mark you can get okay so please have a look at those as well do those in your own time um, with the course, there is a community, okay? So this community, I um, should have invited you via email already. If not, please try and find it. There's one on IGCC Human Biology. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever uh, about um, course content or tasks I've given you, anything like that, then all you need to do is post in there, ask a question, and I will be checking the, that uh, community quite regularly. So I will be able to answer that. So it gives you that um, instant access to me, um, along with any other course that you do. The, the tu All the tutors will have their own community page where you can chat with the tutor and ask questions. Well, I'll just keep emailing. Um, put all your questions in that community thing. If you're struggling trying to find it, then... Um, let me know okay um that's the second bit um throughout the whole course <laughs> each um session um it you'll be given obviously you've got your two hours a week with me that's fine okay don't just expect that's it okay i will set you um tasks to complete in addition to the hour with me, this will secure and cement your knowledge and also just maybe give you worksheets and resources to put in a folder so that you can keep up to date with things. And don't forget, you have your textbook as well. Highly recommend reading through in the textbook the sections that we are covering. OK, so each lesson, either read the textbook just to confirm everything. Um, but also complete the task. They will be independent. They don't need to be marked. You've got answers there. Um, so it's kind of like a, a self-evaluation and um, assessment sort of thing. So just keep up to date with those tasks. Set yourself um, a time each week where you will do those tasks. And they're not going to be hours long. We're talking about for every hour session, there might be half an hour to an hour I don't know it depends how long it takes for you to do the tasks um, of work sort of thing okay so please don't just think that's it that's the hour done I'm I'm all happy it just you need to do those extra tasks to um yeah to just cement that knowledge when you join the session make sure you always have pen paper calculator <laughs> for each session they're always handy to have to hand because I might ask you to do so right can you quickly do this I'll give you 30 seconds to see if you can do this um and then we'll go through the answer so there'll be that sort of interaction going on as well so again that's just another way of um making sure everything is interactive and then how I'm going to structure each session I thought it's really important to let you know this because then you know what to expect each time so we'll always start, apart from lesson one, uh, we'll always start with a little recap. So I might just 
um get you assess you on something that we've previously done it might be something linked to the to the session we're just about to do or it just might be a random one but again it's a get a bit of revision um keeping you up to date with things i will then go on and literally i have copied and pasted the sections in the specification that we will be covering in that session okay so that's on the next slide and then as i was saying before um each session will have recommended tasks to do they are voluntary but highly recommended okay so try and complete those as well everything will be in the folder on in podia so in podia i will do lesson one and then i'll upload everything you need for that lesson in in that folder um yeah as i was saying extra work needed per session so the task will help you achieve that extra work or you can just find something independent but obviously my my what i recommend it will be most suitable throughout every powerpoint i will highlight in bold key words now start from session one every single bold word i want you to produce your own you can do flashcards you can do your own glossary probably prefer or, or recommend flashcards so you can create your own with pieces of paper colorful pieces of paper doesn't matter you can do post-it notes that's another good one do post-it notes in bold uh the keyword on one side and turn it over and what does that mean and then you can put them <laughs> put them everywhere around the house biology is pretty much like learning a new language lots of keywords are you, you, you will learn but they're also very essential in your answers in your exam questions okay so keep up to date with those add that to your weekly um tasks to complete i'm not going to mention it every session but you will see the bold words come up all the time. It's down to you to up, keep your glossary up to date. OK. Um, and as much as I can, I won't be able to do every session because sometimes the content is uh, it, it's difficult to describe. It might be processes, but it's not until you learn a particular example that the exam questions then are, are relevant so i might teach you something but i can't actually give you an exam question on that until i've taught you something else but as much as i can i will include exam questions at the end to show just examples of how this knowledge and the content will be applied okay so we will hopefully include a lot of that if not there, there might be a little quiz something like that um to to do instead so oh that that was it. So hopefully that will that sort of enlightens you and what you're going to be expecting, uh, and also what I expect as well from you to maximize these sessions and to get the grade that you deserve. Okay. So if you can keep up to date with it with the extra little work, that's brilliant. And it's great that um whilst we're doing these live, that they're both on the same day. So you could actually one day a week go, right, this is my day that I will do my human biology. So you'll watch the two sessions and then complete the tasks and then get a nice little folder, nice little bit of stationery. We love stationery and folders and post-it notes and colourful things like that. Um, it's a very good way of visualising things. And um, you'll be able to download the PowerPoints. You can print out pictures and things like that. So it's down to you how you do it. If you want any ideas or suggestions on how to revise or keep up to date with things on the community thing just have a little chat and we can have a little maybe a little thread or something going about different revision techniques and things like that as well all of that all in the community so let's start with lesson one so if you've got your textbooks that's fine you can have the the, the pages open i don't mind probably best to just wait until afterwards but um you'll see on the session plan um the lesson one there'll be pages listed which is the beginning page of where the the lesson is started or the content of the lesson um so you can always refer back to that okay um the session plan is um whilst the sessions are live 
they uh, the session plans might be edited. I've already edited it or rearranged a little bit of that from unit one. So allow a little bit of leniency until the whole course is complete. It is a work in progress um, uh, um, worksheet or um, document. Awesome. So lesson one is all about cell structure. So what you need to be able to do is, first of all, know all of the cell structures. Oh, let me find my pen. So we are going to go through a typical animal cell, and we are going to look at what a nucleus is, chromosomes, cell membrane, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and ribosomes. Okay, so we're going to look at those. We are going to look at the difference between a light microscope and an electron microscope images. It's really important to know the difference of those as well. Um, and then second part of the lesson, we're going to look at DNA and the structure of DNA, um, etc. So that that's today's lesson. Part one, that is. Um, so. Let's start off with a image of a typical animal cell. So these are both taken from the textbook and shows you an example of how they can be represented. So here on the left, we have an electron microscope image of the inside of a cell. And I'm really sorry about it, it's quite blurry, but I had to enlarge it. But you've got um, large pink areas here. This is your, these are your mitochondria. They are one of the largest organelles of the cell. Um, here you've got um, the nucleus, which is um, obviously the biggest. And you've got a big, this big center one here. That's where all the DNA is kept. You've got, um, doesn't show on the left-hand side, but on the on the right, you have a cell membrane, mitochondria, cytoplasm. These are typical images that you could be shown in an exam question. So you have to be familiar with what they look like, um, not, uh, and then additionally, what they do. And why does that cell have them? OK, so this is like building up a, a picture of how everything um, works together. So um, this is another thing you need to get used to as well, which we're not going to cover just yet, but it's all about magnification scales. You need to know your different units. So you start with millimetres, nanometres, micrometres, all those sort of units that you need to remember as well. So we will be going over those. Um, what else? Do, 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 do. This is a yeah, liver cell colors are not real. Yeah, we'll talk about this well when you're looking at microscopes and looking at cells that uh, we have to stain them, otherwise, we won't be able to see them. So, they don't actually look pink and yellow, that's only just the stain inside, so you can see them. Okay, but yeah, first of all, make sure you are aware that cells can be represented in different ways and viewed in different ways. The left side is real, the right side is. I always call it like a cartoon <laughs> type type thing. And also look at how, how it's drawn. It's very, very simple. Single lines for the cell membrane, dots for the ribosomes, which are not labelled, these tiny dots here. They're called ribosomes. Not typically seen with a light microscope because they're so tiny. Um, but yeah, very simple. Remember with biology, when you're drawing things, which you might be asked to draw, it's not an art competition. For, for biology, it's a sharp pencil, nice lines drawn around, nice simple lines to whatever you're labeling. Um, and always make sure there's a scale on there as well. So that's very good. If you're not very good at art, it's brilliant. It's very helpful. So we're gonna go through now the different essential organelles and even the word organelles, tells you a bit about what they are so if you look at the word organ we know what an organ is it's um something in us that, that fulfills a function organelles is means small organs okay so because cells are very very small it's the organs within a cell so that they're small cells small organs basically that's what the word means and a lot of the biological words are quite easy to, once you know uh, certain key um, words, it's very easy to understand what 
what it's explaining. So as I go, I'll, I'll break down the words for you so you, you get familiar with certain parts of the, the terminology and the, the spellings. So all living things are made up of cells. The, the smallest life forms have only one cell. So they're actually called, another key word you could put, uni, that means one, cellular. Okay, so one cell, basically. So if it's just one cell, it's unicellular. If it's many cells, like us, we are, oh, hang on, th 32 trillion cells, just a couple. Um, multicellular, and that word means many. Okay, again, we're already starting to know sort of terminology. So larger organisms like plants or animals may have trillions just said that with different types of cells that do different jobs so in us we have over 200 different cells controlling and enabling us to stay alive basically so this on the these images these are all electron microscopes these are i think there's this i know we're doing human biology but that is it looks more like a plant cell this looks like an epithelial epithelial is an edge a layer of edge tissue um, over here. These are your unicellular organisms up here. Could be, I don't know, it's like a bacteria or, or an amoeba, something like that. Um, so again, images here show you real life um, uh, uh, examples of what cells can look like. So, you can get the real life ones and you can get the cartoon ones. Okay. So this one here is a diagram uh, shows an animal cell. Animal cells are a type of eukaryotic cell. So this again is another way of, it, it doesn't really pinpoint to multicellular, but eukaryotic it are organisms that are generally multicellular, but you do have some... Uh, unicellular ones as well. Now, as a comparison, you also have prokaryotic, which are just single cell bacteria, as an example. So it's either eukaryotic or prokaryotic. Animal cells are definitely eukaryotic, which you, that's, that's the word you need to know. So let's go over some of the subcellular uh, structures or, or what we now know as organ L, so small organs. So we have cytoplasm, ribosomes, cell membrane, mitochondria, and nucleus. You will need to be able to identify them, label them, and explain why they are there and what they do, what their function is. Okay, so we're going to go through this individually. So let's start with cell membrane. So it's, it's, cell membrane is, is vital. It's actually um, made up of fat. This is why you need fat in your diet. If you don't have fat in your diet, you can't make cells. Anyway, the point of a cell membrane is not only to keep everything nicely compacted into a cell, but it also controls what goes in and out of that cell. Okay, here they've done an example of it will control and enable small things to go in, but not large things. That's absolutely fine. So that's the sort of thing it will go, right, okay, glucose can come in, oxygen can come in, but nothing else. Okay, it's it's like that. And we call that partially or selectively permeable. Okay, another bold word. Um, once inside the cell, you've got your first sort of organelle, and that's called the cytoplasm. And it is, imagine it like jelly. It's quite um, a thick consistency because what within the cytoplasm, that's where all the chemical reactions happen in. So there's lots of things floating around there, like um, water and salt, but other things as well, traveling to where it needs to go. So it needs that medium to be able to move. It was just air, it would find it more difficult. So it, it provides some sort of medium, okay? And it is just like a jelly substance where all chemical reactions happen. But also is, yeah, mainly made up of water and salt. Then this is something that you don't learn on um, 
GCSE biology is you need to know about endoplasmic reticulum or ER. I just think of emergency room, I just, I'm sorry, but it is, it's ER. And you have two types. Okay, so be aware of that. So you don't necessarily for IGCSE or this course need to know the difference between the two, um, but it's worth sort of knowing. Um, but the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it is, it, it's a, like a little transport system. Okay, it moves things around. So it's a large dynamic structure that serves many roles in the cell. So it's there for calcium storage, very important. Protein synthesis, which we're going to cover next lesson, I think uh, at one o'clock later. Uh, lipid metabolism. Now, metabolism is a chemical reaction. It's basically breaking down, building up, anything like that. That's metabolism. And, oh, that's... Um, the picture's gone over there, bear with that. Maintenance of cellular homeostasis. So it's making sure everything stays like where it's supposed to be, like the levels where they're supposed to be. So I've done uh, electron microscope image up here. All these lines here, all these little squiggly lines here, uh, that's all endoplasmic reticulum, okay? And the difference between smooth and rough, smooth, that could be a smooth one, the rough, have ribosomes on them so they look bumpy okay so that's when that's linked to protein synthesis which you'll learn about later so you do get two different types okay so just be aware of those and what they look like um you've got here another sort of more close up image so my bar has just gone in the way so I can't do that yeah so you've got a rough endoplasmic reticulum with all the the bumps on it like I just showed you um you've got this is more sort of a level that you need to know about um the the oh, oh I'm so good at technology um yeah you need to know the the layers and what the layers are called or the folding of it okay but the idea is that the more folding the more surface area okay more surface area in certain cases it could be more diffusion in this case it's more ribosomes the more movement and etc okay so you have here you've got your this is your nucleus nucleus here and then it releases things from the nucleus and it moves through the endoplasmic reticulum to the ribosomes and then buds off and, and escapes from the, the cell. But again, over the next few lessons, we're gonna establish a little bit more about that and what's come out of the nucleus. So ribosomes, they cover the ER uh, and ear and is where the proteins are made or synthesized. So know the word synthesize means to make, okay? If something is synthesized, it is to make. And in an exam question, if you write, instead of uh, is where proteins are made, if you write where proteins are synthesized, that's just brilliant. That The, the examiner's like, yep, brilliant. That's definite one mark. You'll still get a mark for saying where they're made, but it's a lot. It's more biological. Okay. And we want to know those keywords. We need to keep those keywords going. So, there you go, that's about endoplasmic reticulum and also ribosomes. Um, nuclei, okay, it's not just called a nucleus, there's bits of it that are different words. So the nuclei are large organelles and are usually easy to spot in uh, micrographs or by the light microscope. They're one of the, <laughs> one of the things that is really easy under the light microscope to view. So here is just some, again, some additional images of um, this animal and plant cells here. The difference, like this one here, I can definitely tell is plant because it's far more structured. But here, this is animal and it looks probably more like your cells on your in your um, cheek, cheek cells. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And these are more animal. Plant cells are very structured and regimented. Actually, I, yeah, no, that would be plant cell. Um, so just be aware. But again, you don't need to know about plants, but it's just an image here that 
includes. Okay, so the nucleus is surrounded by its own membrane, which controls what moves in and out. Any membrane controls what goes in and out. It could be the cell membrane or the nucleus membrane. It's still got the same function. Um, but the whole nucleus, this is what it does. It controls the activities of the cell. It also contains the DNA that tell the cell what to do. That's lesson two and obviously a bit here. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to click back there. Uh, let me just move me out of the way. So within the nucleus, it says it's got genetic information. You need to know the word chromosomes. So chromosomes are, for animals, long strings of DNA. Now, fun facts, fun facts number one of this lesson, um, each and every single cell of your body has about two metres of DNA. Okay, so if you put all of that DNA for animals, we have, or for humans, should I say, we have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Okay, and if you put all of that DNA together, that's about two metres. It's a very long piece of, it's a, it's a polymer, actually. It's a very long polymer. Um, but how it's arranged um, within the nucleus of uh, an animal cell is it's broken down into um, 46 chromosomes. 23 come from your mum, 23 come from your dad, and it's then how those two chromosomes uh, interact, the genes involved um, or included on those, and how they all react will determine what you look like, how you behave, um, or chemically and everything, um, and that's where variation comes in. So genes, you need to know that genes are just small sections of those two meters, okay? Genes do not cover the whole two meters. They are just little sections within those chromosomes, okay? There is a lot of DNA that isn't genes and we are yet to find exactly what the extra DNA is there for okay um but those genes you can have a dominant recessive there are different variations called alleles which we will talk about later on um but they are they determine what proteins we make and how we we function and that's going to be lesson two so we're going to look at protein synthesis and DNA replication or cell replication. OK, um, this is a little diagram here showing sort of the, the scale of everything in proportion, as well as your um, key words here. So within the nucleus are your 46 chromosomes. So this is part one of each chromosome. If you unwind it, you've got a strand of DNA. And then within the section or within certain sections of that DNA strand, you have a gene. So you need to know the terminology and the size relationship between those key words like the nucleus chromosome, DNA strand, and gene. Okay. Um, enzymes. Right. Key thing we will talk, there'll be another section on enzymes more specifically, but at the moment, what you need to know is one. They are a protein. That means they're made up of amino acids. If there is a chemical reaction happening, an enzyme is involved. Okay, enzymes are essential. If we didn't have enzymes, we wouldn't be here. Okay, so we are relying on little pieces of protein, basically. Um, and as I said before, they control chemical reactions that take place in the cytoplasm. That's where all the chemical reactions happen. Okay, so, you know, we, we get in there, we're getting to know all these keywords and what's within a cell. And then later modules and units, we will go deeper into understanding, for example, what enzymes are. Ah, mitochondria, we love them. Right, under a light microscope, which isn't as powerful as an uh, electron microscope, you can see these because they are, they are pretty much the largest part of the nucleus, the largest organelle within the cell. 
okay? Um, there are essential keywords that you need to remember. Um, it's like word association. If someone says mitochondria, you instantly link aerobic respiration, okay? And then you then link energy, okay? If a cell requires a lot of energy, it will have a lot of mitochondria. They are the battery of the cell, okay? Without mitochondria, they're rubbish, basically. They don't have much energy. They can't do much. And the cell needs energy for chemical reactions. Um, it could be for movement if it's... Um, uh, if it needs to move like sperm cells for example so it's really important to remember those three words when you get when you're talking about um a, a cell mitochondria so mitochondria aerobic respiration um and energy they go together um respiration if you didn't know what respiration is you need to know basically you need to know this chemical reaction and yes there is an enzyme involved okay so in Every single cell that has mitochondria, there is aerobic respiration, which is a chemical reaction that releases energy. So therefore it's exothermic because it, energy exits the reaction. It requires glucose and oxygen. Okay, and you, you do need to know the chemical formula here. C6H12O6 is glucose and O2 is oxygen. CO2 is carbon dioxide and H2O is water. And you need to balance them. You gotta have that equation balanced. So for me, I always say to students, remember the sign of the devil. 666, everything is sixes on that. Okay. So they're the key things you need to remember for respiration. And it doesn't sort of dive too much into your book at the moment about respiration, but I've added this because as soon as you get to know this and become familiar with this, it is essential okay yeah respiration is a chemical reaction that releases energy that the cell can use learn put it on a, on a flash card you need to know this off by heart okay so that's mitochondria for you beautiful mitochondria oh already on to some example exam questions now i might throw these in in between sessions or in, in, in the middle of the sessions or right at the end um yeah, we are going to go through some exam questions. So, for example, this is a nice, nice, simple one. So it says here, the micrograph image below shows the organelle responsible for providing energy for cellular processes. All they want to know is what is this called? Now, mitochondria, as we saw on here, have lots of these folded, again, Christy, they're very similar words, but A-level standard, you don't need to remember that word. Um, the more... Christy, they are, uh, they have, sorry, the more energy they provide, more reactions can happen. So you need to be able to recognize that on uh, an image. And it is typically, if, if you draw mitochondria, it's like over like that. And it's a very squidgy thing like this. You can draw it like that. Um, and they are really obvious under a light microscope. So all you have to write on this answer is mitochondria. My mitochondria and there's only one mark and that's all you need so always check the number of marks uh name the organelle just write mitochondria okay um other examples here of where you need to know your cellular knowledge so the cell shown below is found inside a salivary gland suggest okay so that's the command word here Suggest what we what can be concluded about the activities of the salivary gland cell from the image above. Now, two marks. And look, there are two things labeled. Now, do you remember my key words for mitochondria? What is the key word for mitochondria that will definitely be needed for this to conclude about the activities? The first word, respiration. Oh, hang on, respiration. Yeah, and absolutely. Hold on. Uh, respir. Oh, respiration, and therefore it provides energy. Yes. So 
you've got to look at the number of marks and split them. So the examiner has labeled two things there. Oh, look, and it's two marks. They don't just randomly label things to go, oh, look, that looks pretty. I might just randomly label that. They label things for a reason to guide you, to help you and support you to know what they want in their answer. OK, so never just ignore an image or a table or anything like that. Just dive straight into go, right, OK, they've labelled mitochondria. So if I know that there's lots of them, mitochondria have a chemical electrical respiration that provide energy. It must be a very, very active cell. And a salivary gland is, it's constantly secreting things and therefore needs to produce stuff, which links us into the ribosomes. So ribosomes, if you remember, ribosomes are there for protein synthesis. Okay, remember synthesis means to make. So therefore this cell produces a lot of proteins. Okay, so that will be your answer in nice sentences obviously um did i no there wasn't a mark scheme on that one but yeah that that you know this is exam application this is an example of how your brain should function and process the information of an exam question look at the diagram look how many marks highlight the command word and then annotate it absolutely 100 percent. annotate the the um diagram as much as you want and then you can write out your answer nice and neatly under the question done this one here question here we call it 1a a student uses a light microscope to look at a human cheek cell you can do this yourself at home if you want to it's absolutely fine um i'll show you how to one day uh the student makes this drawing of a cell perfectly drawn for biology Okay, we don't do any feathering. We don't do this. Oh, look at that. And that's shade in here. Oh, that's not a no, Never do that. Simple, nice straight lines. Name the organelle shown in the diagram. What is that going to be? Big, massive lump in the middle of the cell. It's called the nucleus. Could be that you want to write cell membrane, things like that. Yes, well done. Uh, I like that you're add into that that's good so all it yeah membrane as well another could put the answers there okay but with this one here it wouldn't necessarily be cell membrane it is this organelle in the middle here that'd be the priority to answer there and it is only one mark as well so yes it would be the nucleus well done next question i'm going to leave you a few seconds to do this and don't forget one mark means one minute so please allow yourself one minute to answer each some of them don't need one minute to write one word but others might so this will be a two minute that'd be one minute so that'd be three minutes in all so here you've got the electron microscope image shown below shows sections of inside of a liver cell okay name the organelles indicated by x so these are tiny tiny no, you can see them down there so have a little go of that. Ha write it down in a piece of paper. You don't have to do it in the in the chat. That's absolutely fine. You can do whatever. Um, and then use information in the image to suggest the possible cell activities that take place inside a liver cell. Okay, so have a little look. We have nucleus. And then we need to think, well, what, what are these things? This is the liver cell. So it's definitely an animal cell. So what is going on? Okay, so let me give you a few seconds. Have a little brain, so have a little think. Even if you don't write anything, just like think in your head before I put the answers up. Okay. Little drink. Um, you can either type the answer or just write it down in front of you. That's absolutely fine. That's why you need pen and paper. Just write down in front of you. That's uh, all, all fine. I don't need to check it. Uh, and then you can self-check it um, when I go through the answer. Okay. But you need to be looking at the image going, well, what, what is that? This is why it's really important to 
be familiar with what an actual real life um, microscope image looks like. Okay, we will have a little look in a minute and check the answers. Don't forget it's an organelle. Okay, right, I'm gonna put the answers up. Okay, there we go. Oh, right, it's not gonna go up, hang on. Right, so for part one, name the organelles indicated by X. So they are actually ribosomes. They're so, so tiny, they're like little dots. But all around here, this all, all these squiggly lines here is actually endoplasmic reticulum. And although it's, I mean, I must admit the, the picture's not brilliant and it might be a bit larger on the actual paper, but there's some little dots in there and they are actually the ribosomes. Okay, so that's all you needed for part B. So use the information in the image to suggest the possible cell activities that take place inside the liver cell. So what do you have to indicate here? There's these large organelles here, which are massive, are your mitochondria. So therefore the activities is, again, your respiration, metabolism, which is just chemical reactions, uh, therefore, it's very active and requires lots of energy. So look, respiration, energy, um, mitochondria, they all link together. Um, you could, because there's two marks, there's two things you need to mention, and this links into your ribosomes, production of proteins. They could write all oh, enzymes. Um, production of enzymes, they'll be like in, inside, but enzymes are proteins, but... I would be careful writing enzymes because um, they're not just producing enzymes. Enzymes is one just one example of protein. Okay, except other examples of proteins for uh, marking point two. So that's fine. That, that's that's a, a relevant point actually. So if you you could write proteins and that's good. We could do enzymes or another pro, any other examples of protein. Okay. So again, looking at exam applications, two marks. So you want uh, activities, multiple activities. So it's been ident being able to identify the organelle, um, but also identifying the other organelles like the ribosomes and what they do. Okay. Brilliant. Right. This is kind of like part two now of um, our our first lesson. So we're going to look more specifically at DNA and how it is arranged and made up and looking at the codes as well. So we've already been, I've already gone through the DNA and what where it's found and that is in 46 chromosomes, or we have 46 chromosomes in every cell, about two meters long of DNA. Um, but again, it's, it's how it is arranged as well. So yes, it is arranged in chromosomes, but it's the way that this two meters can condense down into a tiny, tiny structure, um, like chromosomes. And it does this, but it coils up around these proteins. So there you go, histo are proteins. Another thing coded for by DNA. Um, it's like, you know, those bobbin, not bobbins, um, like cotton reels. They look like that and you, they wrap the DNA around those cotton reels and then fold the histones with the DNA wrapped around in a certain way. Because it's really important that DNA should not get tangled up, it can't get tangled up because it needs to unravel at certain genes and be able to be um, copied, basically. OK, so it's really important that DNA should be unraveled and put back again neatly. It's like, you know, when you have like loads of necklaces and you put them down and then you pick them up again. It's like, how? How did that happen? How did they get so knotted? That can't happen with DNA. So it's really important that the, the you know, you, you can specify that the DNA is specifically wound up around like these histones. You can see in this image here, the like little dots which represent the protein histone. And they're wrapped around those and then they're wrapped around each other and they're neatly put all together. It's like it's got OCD or something with um, with its DNA. But that's what cells are. It's good. 
So if we go down deeper into what actually is a DNA, I've mentioned this before, DNA is a polymer. So that means it's a long chain of repeated units. Okay. And its structure is called a double helix. Again, all these bold words you need to know. So a polymer um, is made up of um, monomers. Okay, mono means, uh, uh, it's another word for um, one, basically, mono. It's the same repeating unit. It's, yeah, mon yeah mon mono, monotone, same, isn't it? Um, and these are called nucleotides. Now, this diagram here from your textbook shows you what a single nucleotide is. It's made up of a phosphate group, a sugar molecule, and a base. Now, the bases change. You've got four bases, okay? And these are adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. And yes, I would learn those. Okay, I'm sorry I haven't got them in bold, but you, you should know these. You can abbreviate them into A, T, C, and G, and that is basically the DNA code. How they are arranged in order is the DNA code, and that code is specific in its sequencing of all proteins, okay? So that's what we're gonna go on to. So you've got to remember that uh, DNA is a, um, double stranded molecule and that's where the double helix double two stranded helix twisted structure comes from so how um, the relevance I would say of um, these two structures the phosphate and the sugar molecule they provide a protection and a backbone for the DNA. So these two, the phosphate and the sugar, are on the, always on the outside of a DNA molecule, protecting the bases that are in the, in, in the middle. And the two strands are connected by uh, weak hydrogen bonds, okay? Um, and these bonds can, well, there's complementary bases for each strand. So as you can see in this diagram here, if you've got one strand with adenine, the second strand will bind to that adenine with thymine. So A and T always bind together. And then if you've got guanine on one side, that will only bind with cytosine on the other side. And there's actually three hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine and two between adenine and thymine. And they're very important hydrogen bonds, they're weak, um, so they're easily broken, but they're easily put back together again, which is ideal for DNA because we want to unravel it, sequence it, and put it back together again. So it's constantly doing that, sort of pulling apart. And that's what lesson two is all about, um, next lesson. So again, we're going to go over DNA in more detail next lesson, but this page is essential to know. You need to know the nucleotide structure. You need to know that it's a double helix because it's a double stranded and they twisted and you need to know the four bases and how they pair up the complementary um pairs of the bases and, th and then you've got your hydrogen bonds okay really important what is the function of dna again this could be a good question it's the hereditary material responsible for passing genetic information from cell to cell how is it adapted to its job? It is a very stable structure. We like it's a chemical, basically. It's all made up of chemicals. Two strands that can separate it so it can self-replicate. Large molecule that carries lots of information. Oh my goodness, so much information. It's untrue. Base pairing prevents corruption from outside chemicals or physical forces, or not everything. You know, that's what cancer's there for, anyway. Um, but anyway, the yeah, that, that's a specific code. It's very important. Okay. So how is it adapted to do its job? So there are a few little things to think about and, and know for DNA. And I've thrown this bit in just as out of interest. The people that actually figured out the double helix, there was three people involved, not just two. So this lovely lady here, Rosalind Franklin, she was responsible for the x-ray images of DNA. She x-ray DNA and found 
and from that realized it was a double helix um also identified that there's a phosphate group so she was looking at dna found the, and took these images and then it was watson and crick um put forth the structure of dna they won the Nobel prize in 1962 for establishing the structure of dna however Rosalind franklin was not um acknowledged in any way but it was her images that helped them establish it was a double helix rude is what i say so yes um some names there behind the dna um very important names right let me just check the time <laughs> so questions so i'm gonna end this session with some questions let me just check as well and yeah um but first of all first of all i'm just going to go on to this bit here um these are the tasks i'm going to be setting for lesson one so the first one is to set, start a glossary flashcards of all the key words okay so go back through the powerpoint list all those bold words and get a glossary going however you want to do that flashcards etc i will also upload some worksheets for you to do so this would be labeling an animal cell uh there'll be one on dna chromosomes and genes and one where you can make your own dna you can take photos of it and um add it into the community if you want that's all good so it's just different ways of learning thing and and, and getting to grips with the information um I've also added this one here. It's, yes, I've gone through the organelles in the textbook, but there are other ones that you might need to be aware of. Okay, it's good to know these things. So if you want to do something extra, find out about these extra organelles as well. So this image over here is all just what's in the folder, what I'm going to upload. So you've got um, model, you've got your uh, matchup, terminology and then you've got a labeling something or other this is just minimal you can do anything extra else you want as well this is the glossary etc but let's finish with the some of these questions here okay so we've got a good five minutes here so if i give you a couple of minutes to start these the ones in italics are um just a little bit more challenging okay um, if we if you don't get to complete them all now, that's absolutely fine. But I'm going to give you a few minutes to see, just jot down some answers. And then in about two or three minutes, I will go through the answers. So what I will do, I will just pause the recording. So if you do want to say anything now, then you can bear with though. Right, so giving you a few minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the answers with you. So what elements uh, is DNA made up of? So that, oh, let me just check I can write, hold on. Oh, I knew it, I knew it, mark it up. Hang on, bear with. And I'm going to do blue because I don't like red. So that is your, your phosphate, your sugar, and your base, which is, there's four of them. Okay, that, they're the elements that, uh, what elements is DNA made of? What are the monomer units called? And that's your nucleotides. Okay, name the three parts oh, of the monomer unit. So that also, that should have been your, what elements is DNA made of? Now I'm confused, elements. So I would have said that the, the monomers are made up of those three parts. So hang on, let's go to that one there. Um, DNA made of. Oh, I suppose it could be they could be talking about carbon and hydrogen. So let's just ignore that one because we didn't actually cover that one. Um, sorry about that one. Uh, which bases form complementary base pairs? So that's your A. I always do it as that because then I know that's two hydrogen bonds. And then G and C. Okay, so I I want them that in an exam. If that was the question, I would write out the full name: so adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. Okay, what holds the two strands of of DNA together? They are your hydrogen bonds. Okay, 
And then you've got the more a little bit more challenging ones at the moment. So if the base sequence on one strand of DNA is GTD, what would be the sequence of the other one? So I just write them out like this. T, G, G, C, A, T. Okay. So that's just your op opposites, your complementary ones. And this is quite often a question. So you've got 19.9% .9 of the base pairs of DNA are guanine. What percentage are thymine? So here you've got to link that guanine equals 19.9%. .9 so therefore, cytosine should also be 19.9%. .9 so if you add up both of those, 19 points, when you need to calculator. So that's basically your forty. 38.5, uh, 39.8%. And then you do 100 minus the 39.8%. So that's 60.2. Please correct me if I'm wrong with my maths. So I don't. And then obviously that 60.2% is everything else. So that is your A and T um, composition of that DNA. So therefore, you've got to say A and T is half. You divide that by two. So that's 30.1%. Therefore, thymine is also 30.1%. So if you add up all of those, it should equal 100%. Okay, again, that's using your knowledge that they're, they're what base pairs are involved and that it all makes up to 100%. And then why is DNA suited for its job? That was what we put in the previous thing. It's um, stable is the most critical thing you need to remember with that one. Um, it's, oh, what, what else can we put? Uh, yeah, I would have put in there that it's got a uh, stable, it's um, got its backbone, it uh, can se easily self-replicate. Um, the Yeah, the backbone gives it structure, but also um, enables it to be protected from any outside damage to the base sequencing. So that, that's what I would answer for that. It depends on also how many marks that is. But 100%, you've got to say it's stable. It has a backbone. Oh, dear, I can't spell backbone. Um, to prevent damage, something along that line. It might just be a simple answer like that. OK, so they're the kind of sort of questions you might get thrown into a bigger question about something else like mutations or some cystic fibrosis or inheritance, that sort of thing. OK, so that's why I put these sort of questions in about the DNA. But I hope that makes sense. And sorry about question one. Um, but I think that's they're talking about carbon and hydrogen and things like that, which we haven't covered on there. And I uh, just. Yeah, I just, when I saw it, I thought, oh, it's those ones. But anyway, okay. So that is the end of lesson one. I will, well, because it's live, this will soon be uploaded. Um, if you're watching this pre-recorded, then there'll be a lesson one folder with this PowerPoint in, the video in, and also some activities and tasks to do, which I highly, highly recommend you do. Okay. So hope that's been okay. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget if you need to comment in there about anything, you um, go to the comments.